we are assured of victory. We are sure of success. We are sure of overcoming. We are sure we are fighting a battle that we can never lose. Because we are fighting on the side of the Lord Jesus Christ. Our great mighty captain who has never lost a battle. The Lord Christ himself. Who challenged the devil to a duel and he finished the devil. And after he finished the devil and he took the key of hell. And the key of death from the hand of the devil. He said it is done. It is finished. We thank you because we are walking on his side. Fighting on his side. And there is only one final outcome. And that is that we are victorious and conquerors. That's why we have confidence this evening. That as we wage spiritual warfare, we are assured of victory in Jesus' name. Father, we are well ready. Our weapons are in place. All we need is a little bit of information on how to do the battle. And Satan is in for a troublous time this evening. All we need to do is to get some information on how to go about the battle. And Satan is in for a tough time this evening. Oh Lord, we are praying that you will grant us therefore understanding. And you will make our hearts to rise up. You will put only anger in our hearts against the devil. Whatever the devil has been doing, for once, just for this evening, Lord, you will put only anger, only indignation in our hearts against the devil and against his work. And there is only one thing that will happen. We will crush his head and break his force and cancel his powers and take the kingdom from his hand in Jesus' name. Father in heaven, we we'll pray that we shall not be like that king of Israel who smote three times and is tall. But that Father, this evening, we will smile and smile and smile and smile and smile and smile and smile until we smite the devil to finish. We will not stop in Jesus' name. Therefore, quicken our hands, strengthen our muscles. Let our spiritual muscles be on our last. And let our weapons be sharper than ever. And put the devil tonight right under our foot and he will never rise up in Jesus' name. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. See that we are ready for, we are in for a battle this evening. Before we pray, I want to share with you on spiritual siege and invasion. Actually, we are going to learn again principles on how to wage spiritual warfare. In Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15. And uh, verse 4. For whatsoever things were written aforetime, we are written for our learning that we, through patience and comfort of the scriptures, might have hope. On the strength of this verse alone, the child of God can learn a lot of things from the Old Testament. Because we are told that those things that were written aforetime, that is, before the time of the New Testament, they were written for our learning that we who are New Testament believers, through patience and comfort, that we obtain from the Old Testament scriptures, we may have some hope. In 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 11, we find the same thing repeated, but in a, in a different way. Now, all these things happened unto them, for example, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Again, we are told here that all the experiences, particularly now, the occurrences and the incidences of the Old Testament and all the experiences of the saints in the Old Testament, the Bible says they are just examples and they are just patterns for us, New Testament believers and they are written for our admonition because the ends of the world have come upon us. As we learn this evening on spiritual siege and invasion, maybe many of us may not understand what the topic is saying. But I'm trusting the Lord, the Holy Spirit himself, to interpret scripture into our hearts in Jesus' name. Here we find principles on how to fight spiritual battle. And you know that even before, the, even before you are born again, I'm sorry, even if, you born, even if you are not a worker, by the virtue of the fact that you are born again, just because you are not going to hell, that automatically makes you an enemy of the devil. And you may say, well, Satan, leave me alone. I'm not troubling you. I don't do evangelism. Even if you are a Christian, even if you don't pray, the fact that you are born again and you are going to heaven sets the devil against you, whether you know it or not. So there is nothing like Christianity and then civilian life. As a Christian, the fact that you are born again sets you in a warfare automatically. And so you need to really sit tight this evening uh, to understand 
What we mean when we're talking about spiritual warfare, because we're all fighting it. Your young convert is fighting it, and you need to teach him how to do it. The one you preached the gospel to last week, and God converted, the fact that he got converted, already is fighting battle. You need to understand that. How much more now, when you have even gone beyond being an ordinary born-again Christian? How much more now that you say you are a worker, a minister of the gospel, a leader of the people of God, you are the arch enemy of the devil. All the anger that he could not vent on Jesus Christ because Jesus has conquered him, it is you now. You know what the Bible says? Somewhere in uh, Revelations, I think chapter 12, uh, the Bible says that a woman was, to tra- was traveling and that woman was to give birth to a child. And, uh, but she had had some other children before. But uh, this particular child she was to deliver, the dragon, Satan, sat in front of the woman and said, I am waiting for you to deliver that child. Just deliver that child and I'm going to finish that child. And God have mercy on you if I don't finish you yourself. But you know, the Bible tells us when that woman delivered the child, the Lord sent uh, uh, an angel or something. And the angel carried away the child and the mother ran away. And Satan became frustrated, unhappy. And the Bible says he turned after that incident, he now went after the remnant of her seed. That if I can't get this woman and the newborn child, the other children she has had, let me go and deal with them. Now, I know Bible t- the students will say, but that's talking about Israel and the tribe of Israel and all that. Yes, but apply it to Christianity. On the cross of Calvary, Jesus finished the devil. Finished him. Conquered him totally. But you know the devil is still alive in the world today. Is he not? He's still alive and kicking. He's still going all over the place, causing trouble. And if he couldn't get Jesus Christ because Jesus has finished him and Jesus is no longer in the world, he, he will not leave you alone. So you need to understand spiritual warfare. And uh, I'm going to pick a text, and I will take you through that text, a verse at a time, like uh, I've been doing in recent times. I'll just take you through an exposition of that text, and we'll see how we will wage warfare. And how we'll fight battle. Now, for, by way of definition, the word siege, actually, is talking about all the processes that are involved in the conquest of a city. When a soldier, a group of soldiers, want to conquer a city, before they conquer that city, they first of all surround it. They lay a siege round about it. They shut off that city. And they just uh, surround the city and they don't, they don't allow anybody to go in. They don't allow anybody to come out. They surround the place and they say, we're going to finish this place. Eventually, they will invade the city. So first of all, it is siege. Secondly, invasion. And we are, when we are fighting spiritual warfare, Satan understands that principle well. Siege, invasion. He understands it. That is why Satan is a very patient person. He will lay siege upon your life. He can be laying siege for 10 years. He, he knows that uh, he is never in a hurry. He knows that if after those 10 years he will invade your life and conquer you, he will be patient. And he will be laying siege. He will just stay around looking for the time you are weak. He will lay siege against your life. He will bring temptation, different, different kinds of temptation. Waiting for the time, you will surrender to him. Then he hits you hard. He understands the principle. And that is why if you face the devil and you win him over a particular temptation comes and you conquer the devil once, don't sit back, don't relax, he's coming back. In the wilderness, when Jesus was fasting, the devil came once. Said that Jesus hit him. It is written. He left. And he came back again. It is written again. He left. He came back again. It is written again. He left. Finally, he left. After the third one, but he came back again. In different ways. He came through Simon Peter. You will not die. He came uh, through the people. They wanted to make him a king. To sidetrack him from his life calling. As the devil. He will come again and again. He will lay a siege on your life. If he knows that, you know something? You know how the devil overcame him? He just gave him time. He laid a siege round about him. I will wait for this man. I know his weakness. So he started sending all sorts of women across his way. He knew he was weak with women. And he was sending the women. Sending the women. He was laying a siege against Samson's life. Eventually, Delilah succeeded. And so, Satan understands these principles we are talking about. Laying siege and invading. He knows it. But let us use Satan's weapon to fight him now. As we also learn about siege and invasion. I'm going to pick my text from Joshua chapter 6. And uh, we'll start from verse 1. Joshua chapter 6, verse 1. Now, Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came.
Kenny. Let's see what the Lord wants to teach us from this verse 1. Now, Jericho was strategic in the land of Canaan. It was the first major city that Israel came across as they entered into Canaan. Don't forget, they had crossed Jordan in uh, Joshua chapter 3. And this was the first nation they were to meet as they crossed Jordan. This is the first test they were to face. This was the first test city they were to come up against. Listen, Jericho was the key to Canaan. If they conquered Jericho, then they would take over the whole of Canaan. Because it was a strong city. And the fact that they conquered Jericho will send fear into the heart of the other smaller, smaller, smaller nations. Like Ai, like Gibeon, and all those people. Jericho was a strategic place. It stood between Israel and the promised land. And uh, the Bible tells us here, Jericho was straightly shut up. Now, today, one, there are Jericho communities, towns and villages. That are shut up. As we go out in evangelism in our outreaches in the village, division pastor, you will come against Jericho communities that are very strategic in your evangelism. That if you don't overcome that uh, community, that Jericho, you don't conquer it. it. The key of Canaan, your own Canaan, will not be open to you. There may be some a, a particular location, a particular city that is the key to your overcoming the whole of that particular uh, maybe state or that particular division. And that's your own Jericho. And the Bible says such places are usually shut up. Satan knows that uh, it's a strategic place. I'm not going to easily give up Jericho because if Jericho falls down, what is there any hope for AI? No hope at all. And so, as you go in your outreaches out there, you will meet Jericho cities, villages, and towns. A region overseer visited me about two days ago. Uh, was it on Monday? And uh, he said, how is this your effect? Well, I said, we are doing fine. He said, it's only powerful people who can live with people here. I said, thank God that uh, we are powerful. We are fighting it. It's a Jericho place. And as we go out to your churches like that, you will find Jericho communities, towns and villages. Number two, there are Jericho hearts. As you go for evangelism, there are Jericho hearts that you will meet. That will be so strategic that if you can win that heart, if you can conquer that heart, it is the key to your overcoming maybe all the other people in that family. Maybe the husband. If you can win the heart of that husband, that Jericho husband, that is the key that will open to you the heart of the wife, the heart of the children, the heart of the people. But some of us are not wise. We will be concentrating on AI. We will leave Jericho alone. Instead of praying and fasting and uh, laying siege and invading that Jer- Jer- Jericho heart, we will bypass it and go through the other side. We will go and be say, uh, you wife, give your life to Jesus. You child, give your life to Jesus. The husband is there. You never preach gospel to him. His heart is shut off. And yet, if you can win that uh, Jericho, it will open the door to all other places to you. Number three, there are Jericho problems in people's lives. Problems that uh, if you can get that problem solved, if you can get that problem solved, tell those people to do anything. They will do it. It may be they are jobless. Somebody is jobless in your location. And they have been looking for a job for a long time. If you can get that joblessness problem solved, if after that, you are the one who prayed and he got job. And after that, you now say, eh, Brother Sanso, I want you to go to, he will go quickly. Because the Jericho problem in his life, you are taking it out. But if you have not dealt with the Jericho problem, you are just wasting time. You are saying, eh, okay, go and do this work. He will say, you are saying I should go and do it. This thing that is shut up in my life, I have not entered into it. For, for example, a couple in the church, barren people. They've been barren many years. And then they came to church. And uh, God helps you. And uh, you pray. And the God child, the Jericho problem is taken away from their lives. And that key opens every other door in their life. They were not committed before. Before, when you say evangelism, you know, they just feel that, well, what, me, do evangelism. what evangelism am I going to do with this reproach in my life? What will I say now? That God is, uh, Jesus is alive. When this problem in my own life, I have not solved it. Eh? This mountain in my own life has not moved. And now you are saying evangelism. And then God helps you. And you now pray. And that Jericho problem is done, is uh, removed. Now you tell them, evangelists, they even you don't need to tell them. They will be the number one to come. Because the Jericho problem in their life, you are taking it off. Or maybe it's a sickness in his life. And anytime he wants to do anything for the Lord, the devil will say, You, you, that you see people like you that God wants, 
with this kind of problem in your life, this sickness in your life, is it you, the kind of, you kind of person that God wants? No, it's not your you kind of person. It is the other people who don't have problem that God wants. And when God can help you, I remember so years ago, the years preached the message, the power of faith and, um, and the power of unbelief. And he said that uh, when he started praying for the sick, he started because of burden and trouble in his heart, as I've said before. He said uh, there was a particular brother who loved the Lord, he loved evangelism, loved preaching the gospel, loved everything, spiritual work. But the brother had a problem in his life. The problem was that occasionally something would just bundle him and he would just fall down and be foaming in the mouth. And uh, he could go for evangelism and maybe they are just doing evangelism. That thing could happen to him. And it was a reproach in his life. And the brother will come to the pastor then and he will say, hey, this problem in my life, hey, is there not something we can do about it? And they will pray, pray, pray and nothing happened. And the thing will happen again. And it was a burden in his heart. And that thing became a limiting factor in the life of that brother. Until one day they were coming to fellowship. And in those days they used to enter Molue, you know, large bus. And the thing would be packed full. And the brother didn't have a place to enter in the church, uh, in the vehicle. He had to stay at the staircase, you know, on the vehicle. Just at the door place there. And as uh, they were going in the, on the Lagos Express like that, the thing caught him and he fell down. And he died. Jesus said when he saw that, he went to God in great agony of heart. That, oh God, if I had been able to remove the Jericho in the life of this brother, he wouldn't have died like this. And he said that was how God started to help him, to pray for the sick people. When, we, when there are Jericho problems in people's lives, and we don't do anything to meet that problem, I tell you, very little, they won't be able to do much. Tell them to do this, well, they will say, we want to do it, but there's this uh, Jericho wall now, that you have not done anything about. And so, there are Jericho problems in people's lives, which, if you can remove it, it will be the key that you unlock all other doors. Number four, there are Jericho problems in your own personal lives. And I, that's why I say we're going to pray this evening, because I know many of you are here with Jericho problems. Something in your life that has refused to move. You have used all your faith, you have commanded, you have fasted, you have done whatever you could do. And yet, the thing is still there. And yet, if this thing removes, it will be a wonderful privilege uh, for you to be more useful. Maybe marriage. Like the brother was leading prayer here, uh, as the Lord was leading him, and he just led us. And he said we should pray that, you know, there are people who have problems in uh, marriage. They say, well, how do I, I, I know will of God now? Uh, this and that. And what do we do now? That's a problem. Jericho world. And this brother or sister is old and matured, but no husband, no wife. The Jericho problem, if we don't do anything about that Jericho problem, it will shut up that man from Canaan. It could be joblessness in your life. That you yourself, you are so jobless. You have tried all you can. You have gone everywhere you can, but you just couldn't get anything to do. It's a, it's a, it's a Jericho problem. Spiritual indeficiency in your life. Maybe you, are, you, are, you have been praying for sanctification. You couldn't get it. It's a Jericho problem. Or maybe in your own life, you have been looking for power, you know, to at least help people in your house fellowship. Power to help people, at least in, to be able to pray a little and get headache removed, stomach trouble removed, in the district church or in the location, in the village, where you are. And you say, oh God, I'm not looking for big power. Just help me. And these people complain of uh, stomach trouble. Instead of running to the juju man, help me to pray so that their stomach trouble will go away. That's a Jericho problem. But you know, there's a key that opens those doors. Number five, there are Jericho problems in the church. The church as a whole, problems that are just there, that the whole church will be battling with, battling with, and it's like the problem will refuse to go. Maybe death. You know that uh, almost every month, somebody will just die. You, like, one month, you announce, uh, well, maybe you don't announce, but the workers know that somebody just died. The following month, uh, another person dies. And then in workers' meeting, you announce again, you're going to bury so-and-so, uh, one of us he has gone to heaven, praise the Lord, he's now resting at home. That second month. Third month, another person dies. And then you say, well, blessed be the name of the Lord. He, was, he did all his restitution. I know he's in heaven now. Before long, those workers will start looking up. Who will be next? <laughs> if you don't do anything, something about that Jericho problem in that church, the church will scatter. And the devil knows all these things. They are Jericho walls. Verse 1. Now, Jericho was straightly shut off. Because of the children of Israel, none went out and none came in. What do we see again from that verse? Understand that Jericho was shut off on the orders of the king of Jericho. He was the one who commanded that they should shut the, the place off. That Jericho is not, was not existing on its own. It had a king. Listen. There was a king. A king. A, Joshua couldn't see that king. All Joshua could see was that Jericho was shut off against him. 
But behind the wall, behind the closed doors of the city, there's a king there who gave instruction and said, close up the place. And by the way, that king had very superb intelligence network. Look at Joshua chapter 2. And verse 1. And Joshua, the son of Nun, sent out of city two men to spy secretly, saying, Go, view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into an harlot's house named Rahab, and he lodged there. And it was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in hither tonight of the children of Israel to search out the country. And the king of Jericho sent unto Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men that are come to thee, which are entered into their house. They did come to search out all the country. So part the intelligence work. SSS first class. I mean, these people came under disguise. They came dressing like Jericho people. Because the Bible says in verse 1, they came to spy secretly. Uh, if you are going to spy your enemy, will you go in the way we recognize you? No. You will try as much as possible to look like him. Whenever Satan wants to catch you, he doesn't come like Satan. He comes like a man. So when he came, when they came, they came under, under, under this guy. And yet, the king of Jericho had a superb intelligence network. And he knew immediately. Not only that they had come into town, he knew where they were. And he said, come on. The men in your house, release them to me now, now. Wonderful intelligence. Our enemy, the devil, also has intelligence. Behind any problem, every problem that is shut up against you, is there is only one king there. Only one king there, and he's the devil. He is the one, he is the one who he discovered there. He said, bring them out to me. But you know, they couldn't get there. So he said, okay, if I can't get those people, at least I will make sure that if they are still in this town, they don't go out. And if they are outside this town, they don't come in. So he shut the door. Lock up the gate. Nobody should go in. Nobody should go out. To try as much as possible to see that these people don't get into Canaan land. And the devil is waiting for you. To see that as much as possible, you, sitting and looking at me now, you don't get to Canaan land. That Canaan land can be the village where you are working. That God should give you that village. That may be your own Canaan. The Canaan land may be in the heart of a particular man in that village. That if that man can be converted, all other people in that village, they will just easily be converted. I mean, people like Simon the sorcerer. He was a Jericho heart. He was a Jericho heart. When Philip preached and he was converted, or at least he said he was converted, the Bible says that before that time, all the people, they had been looking at him as the great power of God. But when he was he believed now, and he put away all his, uh, you know, whatever, idolatry, and he now said, I'm now a Christian. All the people who are believing him before, they also came. He was a Jericho heart. And maybe you have that, that kind of a heart in your location, in your fellowship meeting. A Jericho heart somewhere. Or maybe there's a Jericho problem. Behind that problem, there is only one person there, and that's the king of Jericho. And he is the one shutting the door, saying you are not going to enter. But you know something? In chapter 2 of uh, uh, Joshua verse 8, let us look at the situation report in Jericho as given by a member of the city, Rahab. Rahab was living in Jericho, so he knew the situation report in that city. Look at verse 8. And before they were laid down, she came up unto them upon the roof, and she said unto the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land, and that your terror is falling upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when ye came out of Egypt. And what he did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side, Jordan, Sihon and Paul, whom ye utterly destroyed. And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. That was the situation reports. Their hearts were melted. There, there was no more courage in their hearts. They were just trembling. In fact, he said, their terror was falling upon them. And yet, the king of Jericho made up his mind that he will not go down without a fight. I know our hearts are melted. I know we are in trouble. I know terror is falling, but I'm not going to go down without a fight. I'm not going to surrender just like that. We are going to fight it out. Fight it to finish. Yeah, I know I am defeated. I know I know these people. I know I don't know. I don't think I can stop them. But they are not going to have it easy. So he shut the door. Let them come and meet me here. The devil knows. Listen, you don't know. The devil knows. That is fighting a lost battle when he's fighting the weakest child of God. Satan knows that on behalf of the weakest child of God, Jesus Christ is fighting. But because he will play upon the ignorance of that person. 
play upon your uh, lack of intelligence, play upon your ignorance, and put you in a corner and say, well, I have closed the door, you cannot enter. He's just bluffing. You will enter this evening in Jesus' name. So, that was the situation report. Not only that, in chapter 6 and verse 2 of Joshua. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thy hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of Belial. That's what God said. That's what God said. I have given you Jericho, and all the men of Belial, everybody inside it, including the king. And yet, those, that king was not going to give up easily. That Jericho community, God has given it to you. Amen? That's your village, that's your town, that you are saying, it's so hard, it's so dry, it is not possible to overcome. Ah, evangelism is difficult there. God says, I have given into thy hand that community, that village, as a word of the Lord to you this evening. And it says that Jericho heart, your father's heart, your husband's heart. Are you there? Your wife's heart. So hardened like Jericho was. God says, see, I have given into your hand the heart of that man. Who is saying, it is not as long as I'm alive here. You say you will follow that Jesus. Okay, I'm waiting for you. When the time of marriage comes, I will see who will give you to a man to marry. Me, I'm, I'm your father or I'm your uncle. As long as I'm alive, you won't get married. God says, see, I have given into thy hand the heart of that man. Or maybe there are Jericho problems in the lives of members of your church. These coordinators, are you there? That there are... There are, some people, there are some people who have peculiar problems in that church. That's your district church. And you are looking at the problem as if, well, no hope again. This one is very difficult. God says, I have given into thy hand that Jericho problem. Maybe in your own personal life, there is a Jericho word. Ah, this evening, you better learn to pray. And batter down that word. Because I'm going to teach you how to batter the word down. But you know, you want to understand the promise of God. He says, I have given you that Jericho problem in your life. That thing that defies all solution. Uh, that thing that looks like a mountain that is like nobody can bring that mountain down that thing that looks like hey, I'm here, I am in, I'm the problem troubling you and I'm not going to go, I am the one and that thing that is just limiting your life and making your life to be substandard God says, I have given you that Jericho world maybe you are here as a worker, you yourself you are barren you yourself you are sick, you yourself, whatever is the problem that tonight you will batter that Jericho world down because that's what God said, I have given it unto you and maybe there are Jericho problems in our locations. Members are not cooperating with you. Location pastor. When you say yes, they will say no. When you say no, they will say yes. You cannot see eye to eye. That's a Jericho problem. That's an evil spirit that is causing a misunderstanding in that location. You need to do something about it. You are suspecting them. They are suspecting you. Nobody trusts one another. Anonymous letter from here and there. A writing region over here. Our pastor is this. Our pastor is that. That's a Jericho problem. Or in your own location, there is so much uh, trouble. By the time you grow to 50, then something will just happen. Then you come back to 20 again. And you just cannot cross that 50 line. It's a Jericho world on top of your head. What are you going to do about it now? Or maybe in your own life, there is a test. Just that limitation. You have been praying, Holy Ghost baptism. Oh, it's like a wall. You can't cross to that side. Others are baptized in the Holy Ghost. Here you are. You've been sanctified for the past five years now. No Holy Ghost baptism. And you're almost concluding. Maybe God doesn't want to give me. Maybe I'm not a candidate for Holy Ghost baptism. But that's a Jericho word. God says, see, I have given into thy hand Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor. Understand something, please. God had given all of Canaan unto Joshua and unto Israel. All the land of Canaan, including Jericho itself. I mean, before they, before they ever crossed Jordan, God had told them, I have given you all this land, everything that is called Canaan. I've given everything to you, Jericho included. And yet, do you know what happened? Israel could not possess an inch of that land until they had fought serious battles for possession. Hey, but God has promised us, hey, yes, He has promised you, but you must fight for it. But God said he has given us the whole of Canaan. Supposedly, we just say, God has given us Canaan. We don't do anything about it. God has given us Canaan. We never pray about it. God has given us Canaan. We never fight. Spiritual warfare. About it, just, God has given me Canaan. And you just sit on that. I tell you, you will die not entering that Canaan. God has given us great and precious promises. Promises of life and of life hereafter. Promises that, are, that can never be denied. Promises of success in all departments of your life. Success in your soul winning work. Success in your pastoral work. Are you there, location pastor? That you are saying, well, I just have four people in my location. God has given you promise of success in winning that village. 
I know God has given me promise of success in this town. This uh, if a town, as I delight trust as it is. God has given us promise that this land, everywhere the soul of your foot shall tread upon, I have given unto you, including, including the seed, Satan's seed. The place that is called the seat of Satan. God has given the promises unto us, but we will not enter into those promises until we have, until we have fought, labored for them. And that's why in Hebrews chapter 4, Hebrews chapter 4, verses 9, 10, and 11. There remained therefore a rest to the people of God. For he that is entered into his rest, he also hath ceased from his own work, as God did from his. Let us labor therefore to enter into that rest. Can you imagine? Laboring to enter into rest. Labor, labor is the opposite of rest, you know. But the Bible says, let us labor to enter into rest. What does that mean? Before you have rest, you have to fight. You have to fight. You have to labor. You have to struggle. You have to engage in warfare before the rest can come. Those of you are saying, yeah, Satan, leave me alone. He won't leave you alone until you fight him all. Those of you think that Christianity is just peaceful. Yes, peaceful. But before peace, there must be war. In Christianity, the only way you achieve peace is by, fight, is by, by war. Peace comes through war. You are a child of God. If you don't fight war, no peace. And it says, let us therefore labor to enter into that rest. And so God has given the promises to Joshua. You will take Canaan. But it is not enough that God has promised. You must do something about the promises. And those of you say, well, I know what God has promised. What have you done? If that promise concerning the Jericho community, the Jericho heart, the Jericho problem in your life, in your church, whatever the Jericho problem is, you know them yourself. Lack of money. You, want, you have good, good projects. I have good, good projects for this church. I know there is a Jericho world I ought to fight. Money, limitation of money, not enough money. You know, there are so many good things to do, but not enough money. That's the Jericho wall. But look at it now. Is, is, does that mean the promises are failing? No, the promises are there. But if we don't do anything about the promise, they will just be dormant. Not useful. And so God in, jo in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 12, that ye be not slothful, lazy, careless, slothful, Indolent, but followers of David, who through faith and patience, they do what? They inherit the promises. What does that mean? That means that if you are slothful, you, the promise will be there, you will never get it. If you are slothful, the promise will be there, you will never conquer it. I tell you that God has given the promises to the people of Israel, but they have to take over the promises, you have to fight a battle. And no, neither shall we also have so saved until we have rested them out, them out from the hand of the devil. Look at Exodus chapter 5. Exodus chapter 5. Remember, it was God that sent uh, Moses to Pharaoh. Go and tell him, I, have delivered, I want to deliver my people Israel. And God was backing Moses up. <laughs> but does that mean that uh, Pharaoh will not fight? Does that mean that immediately you go to Pharaoh and say, My God has said I should call? He will just say, Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Ah, you will be disappointed. He said, God has told me, Thus said the Lord God of Israel, Let my people go. I'm reading verse 1. That they may hold a feast unto me. He said, Who is that your God? I don't know that your God. Is he white or black? You said God. Who, who is that God? I don't know any God. I only know myself. Supposing Moses had felt, well, God has sent me. And therefore, when I get to Pharaoh, immediately I get to Pharaoh like this, and I say, let my people go, just hear the Lord, he would just say, yes sir, yes sir. Huh. Moses would have been disappointed. But he knew that if he was going to deliver those people, he must fight. And if you are going to deliver souls, you must fight. In your location, in your village, in your town, in your district, wherever, in the church here, if we are going to deliver souls from the devil's clutches, we must fight. I'm not just going to say, well, the Lord has sent me. Yes, he has sent you. But you must fight warfare before you get those souls delivered from the hand of the devil. And so he says, let my people go. And the battle continues. Chapter 6, chapter 7, chapter 8, chapter 9. Let's go to chapter 12. It was not an easy battle at all. Chapter 12. 
And let's start reading there from verse uh, 29. And it came to pass that at midnight the Lord smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Verse 30. And Pharaoh rose up in the night, he and all his servants and all the Egyptians, and there was a great cry in Egypt. Verse 31. And he called for Moses and Aaron by night. He didn't wait for money. It was urgent. Right that night, he said, rise up and get out from among my people. You and the people of Israel, just go, 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 go and serve the Lord. As he has said, take your flock, take your heart, take everything. Before, he, struck, he, he said, okay, go, leave your animal behind. Go, leave your children behind. Okay, let the men go, leave the women behind. But now, when he, when he saw fire, he said, go, men, women, animal, everything, go quickly. In fact, in verse 33, when the Israelites were delaying and they were dragging food, the Egyptians were urgent upon them. They said, I said, go, go quickly, leave our land. We don't want you again. Go, we don't want you. In haste, leave. We are all dead men. That's, that's a result of battle. That's a result of warfare. That didn't come because God sent Moses. No. That did not come because God sent Moses. That came because, one, God sent Moses. Two, Moses fought. And if you are just saying, I am sent of God, I am a child of God. Eh, Moses was a child of God too. And if you say, well, I, I am a born again, I have only good baptism. Moses had the power of God too, he had the spirit of God. If you don't fight, you don't do anything about that, Jericho, whatever it is in your life, or in the church, or in your work, or in your location, or in your family, or in your business, or in, I don't care whichever. If you don't do anything about it, I tell you that Jericho world will fall on you and crush you. And so... When God gave promise to Joshua, and he said, I've given you the whole land of Canaan for a possession. Divide the land to the people. It was with an understanding that Joshua will fight. And you Christian workers, house leaders, when we send you to that your house fellowship location, and we say, you are house leader and so-so place. You know what that means? Zone leader, district coordinator, location pastor. When we send you to that place, what we are saying is that that place is your own. Possess it. The fact that I called you and I said, go there. Already is a promise. God has given you. Just like the brother was leading prayer, was uh, saying in a wonderful way. Exactly. And he said, uh, just like the GS said, now I should come here. He has given me the whole of this place. It's now left to me whether I take it or not. Or whether I, I allow what the other people allow to happen, to happen. Joshua chapter 6. Joshua chapter 6. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thy hand Jericho, and the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor. That was the promise of God. And yet, Joshua must fight battle. It was just like some tribes of Israel that failed to take full possession of their part of Canaan. God had given them the land, but they could not take their own part of that Canaan. Uh, in Judges chapter 2. Judges, uh, sorry, chapter 1, beginning from verse 19. And the Lord was with Judah, and he drove out the inhabitants of the mountain, but you could not drive out the inhabitants of the valley. Why? It's because the chariots of iron. The chariots of iron. And that was the excuse that Judah gave. Verse 21. And the children of Benjamin also did not drive out the Jebusites that inhabited Jerusalem. But the Jebusites dwell with them unto this day. They were also there. That was substandard to what God told them. What God told them was that they were to drive out all the inhabitants of the land. Totally. If you read on and on and on, verse 27. Neither did Manasseh drive out the inhabitants of beth and our towns, and Tiernach, and our towns, and uh, Dor, and our towns, and on and on like that. Verse 28 says, it came to pass, when Israel was strong, at best, what they could do was to put them to tribute. But that's not what God said. What God said was to destroy them totally. 29. Neither did Ephraim drive out the Canaanites. 30. Zebulon also failed. 31, Asha also failed. 33, Naphtali also, also failed. But that of uh, 34, Adan was even worse. Look at verse 34. And the Amorites forced the children of Dan into the mountain. They were not the one who was driving the enemy now. The enemy was the one driving there and said, You are not coming here. I'm saying you have no place here. The other cases, they were the people just driving the people and say, Okay, go and stay in that place. We know we can't drive you out, but you must not go beyond this boundary. If this one is the opposite. The enemy said, okay, you Danites, don't go beyond that place. If you go beyond that place, we'll destroy you. After God had promised and he had said, take over the land. 
After God told them in Deuteronomy chapter 7, and verses 1 and 2, and he said, When you come into the land that God, has, your father has given to you, uh, your, the Lord your God has given to you, and you come against the uh, nations, seven nations greater, mightier than thou, and he told them in verse 2, he said, you will destroy them. Let's see the way God put it in verse 2. He says, you will, you will smite them, utterly destroy them, make no covenant to them, show no mercy unto them, make no marriages with them, no business with them at all. But look at these people. He put them to tributary. What do we learn? That's how many believers live at a level less than God's plan for them. That's how you have been living at a level lower than what God originally planned for you. What God planned for Israel was that they should take over the whole land. But now they took part, they lost part. That's how many of us we are living at a level of faith lower than where God wants us to be. That's how we are living at a level of spirituality lower than where God originally wants us to be. That's how we are living at a level of victory, power, authority, lower than where God wants us to be. And we are satisfied. How we say, after all, I have some authority, but is that where God wanted you to be? I have some people in my fellowship, we are, thank God, we were 50 last week, now this week, we are 52. Is that where God wants you to be? Praise the Lord. Last year, we were 110. Now, this is June, the following year, we are 120. Is that where God wants you to be? I praise the Lord. There were only, there were 50 people who had problem in my church. Now, there are 45 who have problem. Is that where God wants you to be? Well, praise the Lord. I have been saved, sanctified, baptized in the Holy Ghost, 1984. And that's all we see. We don't see any other thing after that. Is that where God wants you to be? Oh, well, I thank God because... Uh, what What are you doing too? What are you doing? You must study God's original intention for you. What did and that you study your Bible, you will see what God has said about you. What you should be. You shall be the head and not the tail. You shall be above and not beneath. No man shall be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, I will be with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. That's the word of the Lord. Anything short of that is not the will of God for you, brother. Study God's original intention for you in your life. Concerning that Jericho problem. Study the original plan, the promise of God from the foundation of the world. What is it? After that, number two, you become dissatisfied with the minimum. You just make up your mind, I am no longer satisfied with this minimum existence. You know? No longer minimum. You must climb from that minimum now. If you are still satisfied with your minimum life, like Dan was satisfied, like the Judah people were satisfied with minimum, then you will not go to maximum. When you study the original intention, the maximum, and you compare it with the minimum, you become dissatisfied. Number three, you enter into renewed conflict. New conflict to possess your possession. You enter into new conflict to possess your possession. Because if you don't enter into new conflict, the possession will not come to you easily like that. It's going to, Satan is going to try as much as possible to withhold it from you. You want to cast out a devil. Satan is not going to give up easily and say, Okay, okay, I know you are God. I know you are son of God. Okay, yeah, I will, you can go. No, not at all. You are going to have to do it. You are going to have to look for it. Fight for it. Habakkuk 1.17 Upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. And there shall be holiness. And the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. They shall possess their possession. How are they going to do it? Well, that's the thing. The house of Jacob shall become a fire. And the house of Joseph shall become a flame. And the house of Esau will become stubborn. And he shall kindle them. That's how they, and devour them. That's how they are going to possess their possession. All that the house of Esau has stolen away from the house of Jacob, the house of Jacob will not get it on a platter of gold. All that the devil has stolen from your life, you are not going to get it on a platter of gold. House of Jacob shall become a fire. That's how to get it. So if you don't become fire, you know, like I said some time ago, if this wire, if this wire doesn't have life inside, I can, talk, I can play with it. I can even tie it around my neck. I can say, you wire there. I can use it uh, even to hang my clothes in the backyard. But let that wire get electricity. And let me see who is on this world, who will, who will touch that wire. Satan will keep on touching you unless you catch fire. 
Unless you begin to invade his kingdom, it will, uh, will not go easily. Jericho will not be open to you easily like that. You have to force it open. And uh, to force it open, battle strategies from the Lord. Let me just whet your appetite against the session tomorrow in Joshua chapter 6 and uh, verse 2. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given unto you Jericho and the king thereof and the mighty men of valor, and ye shall compass the city, all ye civilians and the women, and all the little children. Huh? And ye shall compass the city. All you, uh, you know, uh, delicate people, easy going people, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven, with all the blessings inside it. When you hear kingdom of heaven, that just means everything good. That's the only simple way I can put it. Kingdom of heaven doesn't mean you are going to heaven. It means that while you are in this world, anything good that Jesus died for, that's kingdom of heaven. He says he suffers violence. And the violent take it by force. It's not going to come by plucking it on the tree. He says, look at it. Ye shall compass the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. You will do that six days. All those of you, the devil has put you in a corner in your location. You need to break loose from that corner this evening. And Satan has said, you must not go beyond this corner. If you go beyond this corner, we will drive you out of this city. Who can drive you out? When God sent you there. And he said, well, in this uh, town, you must not uh, preach like this. We don't want you to do evangelism. Who is that devil? And all those of you, Satan has put you in the corner in your, in your own personal life. And he has said, you must not go beyond that corner. And he says, that's where you're going to stay. You better break out of that corner. Because that's not the plan of God for you. You that Satan has crowded uh, a particular problem in your life, he has crowded into a corner. He said, that problem will be there permanently. It cannot be removed. Either sickness or body no, or sin or, sin, or whatever, joblessness or no husband, no wife, nothing, whatever, whatever it is. That Satan has just put in one corner. No power to win soul. No power to get people converted. You cannot even share gospel with a single sinner and get him converted. You will just look like a mocker. Before then, that is a war. And all you should do this evening is you better break out of that place. Because, you know, it was God himself who taught Joshua how to fight the battle. God gave him the strategies for laying the siege. And let me just inform you before we pray just now that you also will lay that siege. You will stay against that problem. And you begin to batter it. Ah, when we are battering it, the, the people of uh, Israel, they have some weapons they use. And the Bible says the weapons of our warfare are not canal. They are mighty through God. Thank God we have some of the weapons. We are all fasting here today. Thank God we are praying. Thank God, thank God we are charged. So I will be surprised if uh, you still cannot do anything about your Jericho. That's your location. I mean, that's your family. That's your life. That's your whatever it is. I will be surprised. Because the weapon is in your hand. The battering ram is in your hand. All the things that we shall see tomorrow is already in your hand. All you need to do now is just uh, the little information I've given you. And you will begin to crowd the devil that has crowded you into a corner. You crowd him into a corner. If possible, you explain, explain him all together. Let's rise up and pray. The ball is in your courts. I have done my own part. I will not fight your battle for you. You cannot fight my own for me. Everyone will fight for himself. But I know the Jericho war that I should deal with. And you should know the Jericho problem that you should deal with also. God has given you Jericho, that's what he said, but it will not come down without a fight. It will not come down without a fight. Location pastor, Satan will not give up without a fight. 
uh, wherever you are. Satan will not give up without a fight. What is the problem in your church? The devil will not give up without a fight. You are the one that will knock that wall of Jericho. Knock it again and again and again and again. Batter it until it surrenders. You are the one who will beat down that wall and force that wall to surrender. Is there a Jericho problem in your life? Is there a wall that is crowding you into a corner? You are the one who will deal with it. Are there Jericho hearts in your church that you want God to conquer for you? You are the one who will deal with it. Are there Jericho problems in your church? You are the one who will deal with it. Are there Jericho problems in your community? You are the one who will deal with it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now I want you to identify the Jericho community in this region. If it's one of them. I don't know about your location, but I know about this effect. We are going to do some battering down of the works of the devil, all the idols of this land. Whether or Dudu or whatever, or Ramiya, or whatever their name, or Esimiri, whatever, Moremi, whatever the idol, they shall bow for us in this town. We are here and we are representatives of Christ, and they shall bow. Batter them down in the name of Jesus Christ. Whatever their name, whatever the idols of the land, in the name of Jesus Christ, they shall come down. They shall come down. In your own location, whatever the idols of the land, they shall come down low. They shall come down low in the name of Jesus Christ. All the Jericho walls, Jericho demons, Jericho Satan, Jericho evil spirits, they shall bow down in the name of Jesus Christ. They shall bow down in the name of Jesus Christ. They shall bow down in the name of Jesus Christ. All the idols of the land, they shall come down low. They shall come down low. They shall come down low. Batter them down. Batter them down. Don't let them go. Batter them down. Beat them to surrender in the name of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Listen. You, you heard me talking about King of Jericho, King of Jericho. You think I'm talking about human personality? I'm talking about the devil. And over this town, there is a devil. That is saying, I am in charge. And I am also saying, and I'm sure you are saying with me, I am in charge. So, who will bow down for the other person now? I don't bow down for the devil. I don't bow down for evil spirit. I don't bow down for the powers of darkness. They shall bow. The powers of the devil in this city shall bow. The devil's works in this city shall bow. The devil's works in this town shall bow. Jesus Christ has crushed the head of the devil. Jesus Christ has bruised the head of the devil. Jesus Christ has bruised the head of Satan. He has broken and no push you up in. He has broken his power. He has put all his works under control. Jesus has brought the devil under my foot. And they shall bow. In the name of Jesus Christ, they shall bow. I don't say no to the devil. I don't go away. I don't give way to the devil. Satan, you will bow in the name of Jesus Christ. I break your head in the name of Jesus Christ. You king of Jericho, I take over this land from you. It is part of my inheritance given to me by the Lord. Part of my inheritance given to me by the Father. I claim it in the name of Jesus Christ. I break your head and crush your power. I break your dominion over the hearts of the people in this city. In the name of Jesus Christ. For the Bible says that where my word is as a king, there is power there. The Bible says that when I decree a thing, it shall be established. The Bible says that even though I sit where Satan sits, that I will have dominion in that very place. In your very seat, Satan, I take over the whole of this city, the whole of this region, out away from your hand, in the name of Jesus Christ. And I possess it from you. I claim it from you. You evil spirits that are associated with all the four corners of this city. You spirits of the devil that are sighted all over the four corners of this city. I expel you in the name of Jesus Christ.
In Jesus' name we pray. In the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow down. In the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Amen. In the name of In the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow down. Amen. 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 I don't want to. We still have a whole session later this evening on the firing line. Let's wait till then. But let me help you. Maybe there's a Jericho problem in your life here this evening. A Jericho mountain in your life here this evening. A Jericho problem in the life of any member of your family this evening. I want to pray on that Jericho problem. But before then, I want you to pray yourself and deal with that Jericho problem. Deal with that Jericho problem. Jericho problem in your district, a Jericho wall in your church, a Jericho wall in your location, a Jericho wall in your family, a Jericho wall wherever, 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 deal with that wall, deal with that wall, deal with that wall, deal with that wall. In Jesus' name we pray. Jericho problem in the church. Any attempt of the devil to kill anybody in this church, especially little children, listen, especially little children, we're going to batter down that wall. Whatever coffin Satan is building, we will turn it to powder. Whatever grave Satan is digging, we will cover everything up. Nobody will die in this church. In this whole region, this year, we don't want death. Especially little children, we don't want it at all. And even though the promises are there, if we don't do anything about it, it may not come to pass. I want you to deal with the devil and rebuke the spirit of death from this land. And bind every spirit of death from this land. Especially death of little children. Especially death of little children. We rebuke that in the name of Jesus. We reject that in the name of Jesus. My people in this region are travelers. Oh Lord, I reject death in the name of Jesus. As they cover thousands of kilometers on the road, I reject death in the name of Jesus Christ. Almighty God, I come right now. Every principle of death, all the coffin that the devil is building, all the grave that is digging, I uproot everything and I turn it to powder in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree that the power of life will become the portion of all the people in this church in the name of Jesus Christ. I cancel the principle of death. No little child shall die. Nobody shall die. You devil, you're trying to kill that child. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus Christ. I rebuke that in the name of Jesus Christ. It shall not come to pass. It shall not come to pass. The will of the Lord shall be that all the people here, they shall live abundantly in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, are you there? You have a Jericho world. He said, if Jericho thing in my life, or in my church, or in my location, I know that when we get to Ife, uh -uh, something will happen, and something will happen today. Whatever the Jericho in your life, in your church, in your personal life, in your family, whatever, for once, let's see agree together once again, and see what God will do. Anyway, you are just raised up your hand, I want to pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. I will the weapons of my work. I put on my armor tonight. Because it is a time of battle. 
And I want to thank you because this armor, the armor of God, has never failed before. This armor, the armor of God, has never lost a battle before. Here I come, on behalf of all these your people, with the whole armor of God upon me. And I thank you, Father, tonight, because those walls of Jericho, they are coming down tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. You devil, you king of Jericho, hear the word of the Lord. God saith the Lord to you. Where my word is, there is power. God saith the Lord to you. I shall decree, and you cannot stop it. God saith the word of the Lord to you, that I, I stand in God's stead on behalf of these people. And the Bible says, Shall your lawful captive not be delivered? And, O oh Lord, you remember, what you spoke to Joshua, that you have given Joshua the whole land, and I am the Joshua of today. Because you told me that I shall divide to the people your land for an inheritance. And Lord, remember that you say that I shall come. And when I appear before you on behalf of the people, Jesus Christ, I appear before the inside the throne room. And when I appear under the lordship and the control of Jesus Christ on behalf of them, there is only one outcome, and that is immediate answer. So Lord, I thank you tonight. Accept thanks in Jesus' name. And now, Father, whatever it is that represents the world that has been shut up against these people, Whatever is the Jericho that has been shut up against these people, against their churches and their locations, against their communities where they are preaching the gospel, I command that right now, I apply the battery ram of faith, and I pull down all that Jericho wall in Jesus' name. You all hear the word of the Lord. You all hear the word of the Lord. You all hear the word of the Lord. He says that Jesus Christ, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, he has prevailed to open the seal. You world that has been sealed up, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, I command you, open now in Jesus' name. Yeah. Thus hear the Lord to Cyrus, whose right hand I have hold him, and I have anointed him, and I shall go before him to break asunder the doors of iron, and to break asunder the windows of brass. And he says, that no man shall be able to stand before him all the days of his life. I stand, I'm greater than Cyrus. I'm a child of God. Because of the strength of that promise, all you Jericho walls that have been closed, I command you, open now in Jesus' name. Yeah. All you Jericho villages, Jericho locations, Meforade, Jericho locations, Oyere, Jericho locations, Ara Joshua, Jericho locations, wherever, all over this region, I command you, open now in Jesus' name. Yeah. Oh Lord, I pray, you will pour the spirit of salvation. Over all those lands. And right now, oh Father, let there be a burst of revival in Jesus' name. Oh my God and my Father, all the Jericho parts of this city, all those dry places of this city, where the gospel of Christ is not making impact, where the gospel of Jesus, we are not making a headway, the place like Erefe, all those places called Opa, all those places where we are not making too much impact, I command all you walls of Jericho, I command you, Job, be open now in Jesus' name. Oh Father, all over this land, wherever the gospel is being preached, all over this land, all those interior places, Ipetumodu, all those places, Ipetedo, all those places where they are, the devil has, he has found a resting place. And he says, this is my own kingdom. Uh, hear the word of the Lord. You king of Jericho, that place didn't belong to you. You took it by usurpation. You took it by lying. You took it by subtlety. I come in the name of Jesus Christ, who has created the whole earth. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. And I come in his name. I claim that land from you right now in Jesus' name. For God says, I shall ask of him, and he will give me the heathen for my inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for my possession. And he says, why do the heathen shrink? And the people imagine vain things. And he says, the kings of the earth, they are gathered together against the Lord Jesus Christ. All you, those people, are defeated, you, gathering against the Lord Jesus. Gathering against the Guarding against the church of God, guarding against the gospel of Jesus Christ, ganging up together in the dead of the night and saying, God will not prosper here. God will not prosper here. I announce to you, whether you like it or not, in the name of Jesus Christ, God shall prosper there in Jesus' name. All those of you evil spirits that are ganging up together, saying that at Ara Joshua, we are not going to have the church of God, they are going to close down their location, at uh, all those Okeudu, all those places that know we are here, we have been here from thousand years in memorial, these new, new people coming now cannot just cast us out of that place. You will leave that place. Because this is the day of the Lord, and this day of the Lord, I ask in the name of Jesus Christ, and I command, you will let the people go now, and you will release them now, in Jesus' name. All you Jericho communities, Jericho towns and cities, Jericho villages and hamlets, I command all of you, Alapata, all those of you place, places there, all those of you places where we have had fellowship before, we have to close it down. Hear the word of the Lord. I come this evening in the name of Jesus Christ, and I command all those locations, open right now in Jesus' name. 
For the Lord has sent us to take over the whole of Canaan. And Canaan has been given us for a possession. And he says, whatsoever, the soul of your foot shall tread upon. That have I given you for a possession. According to the word of the Lord, all you Jericho locations, I command, after this place, let the fire of the revival of God spread to all those places. And the gospel shall prevail in the name of Jesus Christ. All those locations where we have been pushed into a corner, insignificant corner somewhere, that people say, are there people here? I didn't know there was a church here. And I've been in this town for a long time. Why did these people come here? When did they come here? What are they doing here? Oh Lord, I pray. All those places where we have been pushed into a little corner. Uh -uh. You said we are the light of the world. You said a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Why should we be hidden in a corner of the town? I command that right now. All those Jericho places where we have been pushed into a little corner. Where we are just cohabiting with the inhabitants of the land. Evil spirits having their own way. Church of God having their own way. I come now on behalf of the church of God. And I decree that you evil spirit, you will pack your load out of that place right now. And you will leave the place for us. And we have dominion in Jesus' name. All those of you places in this city where idol worship is existing right next to our church, even our central church here. Almighty God, I come. All those idols of uh, the devil, all those uh, little, little gods that are recognized in the world but not known in the kingdom, I come now in the name of Jesus Christ. And by the weapon of my warfare, that is not carnal, but that is mighty through God to the pulling out strong good, that cast down imaginations and every thing that exalts itself against, against the knowledge of God. All you idol worshippers in this land, you have exalted yourself against the knowledge of the Lord. And I have received the commission from the Lord to pull you down. Therefore, I render idolatry unpopular in this land. In the name of Jesus Christ, I decree and I ask that all idol worshippers, you will do your idol worship in the corner. I command that in the name of Jesus Christ, the gospel of Christ will fill the whole of this land. And this land shall be one to the Lord. And it will be covered with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. In Jesus' name. I pray for that Jericho heart, the heart of our king in this land. Oh Lord, if that man is born again, a lot of people will be born again. And oh Lord, I pray. I know you have started something already, you are working little, little way. But I pray, Father, you will hit again and again and again and again until that man will surrender to Christ. Until we'll be born again. Until we confess Jesus. To men, this is impossible. But with you, all things are possible. Oh, Father, I pray. He will surrender to Christ. And he will turn away from idolatry. And he will change and give his life to Christ in Jesus' name. <laughs> Father, thank you because I know you have answered. <laughs> Heavenly Father, I bring your people before you right now. All the Jericho problems in their lives. All the Jericho mountains in their lives. All the problems that are defy solution, hindering them from entering their possession, hindering them from getting to the land of Canaan, hindering them from being what they want, you want them to be, making them to live substandard life, making them to live uh, not less than normal. Hear the word of the Lord. You are all these Jericho walls. God has said that He has chosen these people. These people have I chosen for myself. They shall still show forth my praise. Hear the word of the Lord. When you are in the life of these people, they cannot show for the praises of the Lord. When you are in their lives, they cannot manifest the praises of the Lord. And it says, let the people of God be glad. And let the high praises of God fill their mouth. You, these problems in the lives of these people, I command you right now. You will grow wings now and you will fly out in Jesus' name. <laughs> All barrenness of whatever nature, spiritual barrenness, physical barrenness, I command that right now. Whatever you are, wherever you are, in the life of a man or a woman, in the life of a newly married or old people who have been married for long, hear the word of the Lord, you are a Jericho wall. And I command, in the name of Jesus Christ, because God says, see, I have given unto you Jericho. He says, nothing shall, there shall not be buried or be, for, because you are young in my land. He says, the number of your days I will fulfill. He says, he maketh the barren woman mother to keep house and to become the joyful mother of children. That is the word of the Lord. And that must come to pass. And therefore, all barrenness, all you evil spirits, hindering productivity, I command all of you, part your load, come out in Jesus' name. Part your load, come out now in Jesus' name. In place of barrenness, I command productivity. In place of dryness, I command blessing. Let there be blessing now in Jesus' name. Oh Lord, I pray. All those of them who have problems in their jobs, in their families, in, with their husbands, with their wives, whatever it is. All the Jericho problems in their lives that is limiting their usefulness in the kingdom. All the things that just hindering them from being the maximum believer you want them to be. Oh Father, I ask now, and I command that now, all these walls will be battered down. And the people will enter in, and they shall find joy and happiness. And your name shall be glorified in Jesus' name. Oh Father, I pray that henceforth from this evening, your children will learn how to wage warfare against the devil. I pray that we shall be more than conquerors every day of our lives. I pray, Father, that when you will teach us more battle strategies as we go on in the study, oh, Father, I pray that none of us will go back home defeated. None of us will go back home and just cohabit with the devil, but we'll push him out of the way, and he will have no way in any life in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. For in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen.